Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob, the science guy. You know, the other day, Blue Marble Science put out an excellent video on LIGO. Now, LIGO is a laser interferometer, and it has two pipes that go out at right angles that are four kilometers long. Now, one of the problems that you run into is that they have to be perfectly straight. So what he did was he got out the construction documents for LIGO and demonstrated that in order to make those pipes straight, they had to actually adjust the footings for the curve of the earth underneath it. And he used that as a curved earth proof. Now, these two Flat Earth scholars, Cleary and Brian Linke, decided to quote unquote debunk him on that. So they put out some silliness and Blue Marvel Science responded to it. Well, good for them. But I got to thinking, these two geniuses are challenging a retired engineer that built a scale model of the Cavendish experiment in his garage and is measuring G to within one tenth of a percent. And I really don't think that that's the hill they want to die on. But I got to thinking, Blue Marble Science has some cool stuff. But you know what he doesn't have? He doesn't have a 2,500 foot water level in his backyard and an auto level. Let's cue up the music and go measure the curve of the earth. Now, in order to do this experiment, I needed to buy some instrumentation. So I got this Bosch Auto Level. It's a Model 24, and it's accurate to approximately 1 16th of an inch at 100 yards. Now, let's take a moment and just talk about what accuracy of an auto level means. Now, this compass has two arms, and it forms an angle right there. That angle is not dependent on the length of either of these arms. So if this arm extended way out here, and this arm stopped right here, that angle would remain unchanged. Now the way the auto level works is that you level the base of this tripod with a spirit level, and then you use a small spirit level that's on the other side over here, and these knobs, to precisely make this base level. Now, as a final check, inside there's a small pendulum, or like a plumb bob and that hangs straight down along the line of gravity. Now the telescope's optical train is set 90 degrees to that vertical. And as a result, once this is set up and calibrated, when you look through the telescope and look at an object in the crosshairs in the distance, whatever those crosshairs are on will be exactly horizontal to this point right here at the auto level. Now, one criticism that I've had from the science denial community is that the manual for this auto level says that its working range is 100 yards, and that's absolutely correct. When you're using it to establish a level in a building on a construction site, and the reason for that is that after 100 yards, the curve of the earth starts dipping enough that it affects your level. Your horizontal is no longer collinear with your level. Now, that's exactly what we're looking for. But, like with this compass, the length of these arms does not change this angle right here. And when you're dealing with the auto level, which has that pendulum in it, and it sets up a horizontal 90 degrees to that pendulum, the length of that line of sight does not affect the fact that that is a 90 degree angle. And as a result, anything that this crosshair lands on is exactly horizontal to the auto level itself. So their criticism is that you can't use this over 100 yards because the curve of the Earth gets in the way, and we're actually using it to measure that curve of the Earth. So basically their criticism is nonsense, and it's an attempt to deny the fact that we're actually going to measure the curve of the Earth. So let's see how I set up the experiment. Now, at my house, I have a flagpole that has these two support structures on either side of it that you attach the flagpole to. And then what I did was I went out to the dock and I zip-tied a pole 
to one of the supports for my dock and the end of the pole was just touching the surface of the water. And then I took my auto level and I found where the crosshairs were on that pole and I marked it. Then what I did was I took the pole out of the water and I carefully measured the distance from where it touched the water to where that mark was. Then I took the auto level and I went to the other side of the lake and I put a pole, again, just touching the water over by the dam. I set up my auto level. I found a spot on that pole and then I translated that spot to a light pole that was nearby, much like my flagpole. So now I have a benchmark on that side of the lake. So now I have two reference marks on either side of the lake that are in reference to the level of the water and I can make a measurement. Now one of two things would happen. Either one, it'll line up with the top of the cable box or two, it will be above the cable box. Situation one, we have a flat plane between the cable box and my house. Situation two is the water is curved along with the curve of the earth and there will be a drop between my backyard and the side of the lake that has the cable box. And just in case you were wondering, the distance that's 2,552 feet. How do I know that? Well, I measured it on Google Earth. Well, I just described to you my method, but let me go ahead and show it to you so that you see that I followed the method. Here is the dam, and as you can see, I've got my pole right at the side of the dam. Here is the light pole, and here is the charter cable box. I measured the distance from the surface of the water, then I translated it over to the light pole, and as you see, that's 96.5 inches. Now, once I had the reference distance on the light pole, I could look on the auto level and line up the top of the cable box. And then I can bring that over and I can find out exactly where that is on the light pole. It's a simple matter to measure the distance between my reference mark and the mark that represents the top of the cable box and give me an elevation above lake level for the top of that cable box. Now in a perfect world, the crosshairs would be on top of the cable box or they wouldn't be on top of the cable box. And the reason the world is perfect is that there's no instrument or operator error present. Well, we live in the real world and there is instrument error. Now with this particular instrument, the accuracy is listed as 1 16th of an inch at 300 feet. So for every 300 feet you go out, you can be off a 16th of an inch. 2552 feet is between eight and nine increments of 300 feet. So the error is going to be eight sixteenths to nine sixteenths of an inch, plus or minus. I put down 0 0.5 inches, which would be 8 sixteenths of an inch. What we have is it could be half an inch high, or it could be half an inch low. However, we have one other thing that we have to take into account, and that is refraction. Refraction at that distance is one quarter of an inch. So that will move it up. So basically, we have this little area that is half an inch above the crosshair, and a quarter of an inch below the crosshair. If the crosshairs are on top of the box anywhere in that area, that has to be read as no drop because that's within the margin of error of the instrument. But there's one more margin of error and that is the operator error. Did I mark the locations properly? Did I measure them correctly? Now, I spent a lot of time doing this and Obviously, it's something that I'm capable of doing, although I'm not a professional surveyor. My error rate was probably between a quarter and a half inch in all the measurements in summation. However, just for the sake of argument, let's give me a measurement error of 1.25 inches. So what that means is that two inches below the crosshairs, if the top of the box is above that, we're going to consider that as no evidence for drop or curvature. If it is below that, we're gonna view that as evidence of curvature because it exceeds the error rate of the instrument. So let's go ahead and have a look at some of the measurements. 
Well, I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty clear result. That cross here is a good four inches above the top of the cable box. But let's go ahead and make sure that we can mark it to be sure. So what we'll do is we'll go back over to the other side of the lake and we'll take some masking tape. We'll mark where the top of the cable box is and then we'll give a visual cue four inches up with another piece of tape so we can roughly estimate how high that crosshair is. Now right here at the upper edge of this lower piece of tape you can see the mark that represents the top of the cable box. I then measured four inches up. The bottom edge of this top piece of tape is approximately four inches above. It's actually just a hair less. Well there you go. Let me get out of here and we'll have a look at it a little better. Now, right here is the box. Here are the crosshairs. As you can tell, they're a little bit above the level of that box. You see the little part of tape right here that I put on the side? That's where the Earth Curve calculator predicted my crosshairs would be. And as you can tell, I'm just a hair high. And remember folks, the family that fishes together stays together. Now this is very clear-cut evidence for drop due to curve of the Earth. It matches the amount predicted based on the known radius of the Earth. So this is really very good. We could stop right here, but we don't have to. I did this on Father's Day here in the United States. The weather that day was about 75 degrees and the water temperature was rather warm. It's a shallow lake. It's only about four feet deep and it's fed by a very shallow river. So the temperature of that water is generally pretty close to the temperature of the air. It's not really all that bad. And as you can tell, look at the detail. You have excellent visibility on this particular day. This isn't one of those wavy flat earth images. This is very clear cut. But let's go back a couple of days later when it's 62 degrees and see what kind of results we get then. And there it is. It looks pretty similar. And there you have it. We just demonstrated a full two inches of drop from one side of my lake to the other over the course of half a mile. Now, surveyors use eight inches per mile squared to estimate the drop due to earth curve. And at half a mile, that works out to exactly two inches. We were right on the money and hit the predicted earth curve using something as simple as a construction auto level. So the next time a science denier tries to say, show me the curve of the earth, point them to this video, because there it is, right in my backyard. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by. Make sure you take a moment and hit that like and subscribe if you'd like to perhaps do a PayPal or become a Patreon to help support the channel. Now we are trying to raise some money for an observatory dome over at Shamrock Banks Observatory. That's going to run us about $4,000. And if you would like to contribute to that, there's a PayPal link in the description of this video. Toss a couple of bucks this way. If we can get 100 people to donate 20 bucks each, we're halfway to that dome. So take care, folks, and stay well. Bye-bye, the science guy.